Live from the Goner Shop, it's Goner TV. <laughs> Thank you for that introduction. <laughs> very good. Uh, hey, it's Bill Ups here, and we're here for a very stripped down version of Goner TV. Uh, ended up not doing it last month, and uh, you know we we're gonna try to get back in the in the in the routine, right? That's a good word to, word to use. So I hope you'll uh, just keep checking back with us. We're trying to make it work in any way we can. You may see this is a very minimalist version of it. My suit was repossessed, and uh, I've got uh, some videos to show you, some information to put at you. But I hope we're going to continue to meet here in the back of the store uh, in the near future. So, um, but tonight we got some great stuff coming up. We've got uh, Nick Allison and the players playing live. Uh, well, no, they're not playing live. They're playing live on the tape, you'll see. So, like, they're actually performing. It's a live performance. Uh, we've got some new information from our friends at Alive Rescue Memphis and some new dogs for you to check out. If you think about adopting a dog, you might want to watch the video and see what dogs are available. And, uh, and we'll talk to Alive Rescue Mission about their process. And we've got some footage of Optic Sync live. We've got a new video by Ibex Clone. The Ibex Clone record is out, has been out now for about a week. And it is shipping, and uh, you may want to check that record out. We've got that here at Gone to the Shop. Also, um, we've got other videos and uh, information from Alive Rescue. So, uh, I'm glad to be back here with you. And uh, we're in the back of the shop here in Midtown, Memphis, Tennessee. And uh, I don't know, what else uh, would you like me to talk about? You want to just get a video block going here? I think we're just going to start a video block going. The first thing you will see when that comes on is Nick Allison and the Players, and this is from a live performance uh, from the River Series here in Memphis where bands play and then we throw them in the river. And that's on November 16th, and it was shot by Cole Early. And uh, let's check out Nick Allison and the players. It was very cold that day. It was cold that day. Why? Why? Yeah, you mentioned that. Why is that important for them to know? They could, they Shrinkage. Could move their hands. They couldn't move their hands. <laughs> Seinfeld fans, remember that? Seinfeld. <laughs> check out the video and try not to look at their units.
all very much. It's a, it's a real pleasure to be here. I've been looking forward to this, looking forward to this for a while, and I appreciate all of y'all coming out and bearing the cold. snacks do you like? Beef. Hmm, that gives me some idea of what to do. And are you a one dog home or do you like other dogs and cats? I see, that's good to know. But you are, uh, what sorts of activities do you like to do? So there's a profile for you. I think we have some options for this dog. Let's see what we can come up with. All right, let's see what we're gonna do. We've got Lost Sounds. The knots, yeah, and the angry angles. Which one's it gonna be? I'm guessing it's gonna be all three. <laughs> so the dog likes treats and angular punk music. <laughs> so good. So honey is available for adoption to uh, no other pets home. Really good with kids. Uh, likes treats and backyards and walking and uh it's been very good while she's been here all right lynn come here and tell me what kind of music you like are you a one dog house or do you like other dogs she has another little dog in the house they right. snuggle together sometimes Great. they like to play yeah, is Lynn good with children? She loves kids. Oh, Anytime she sees a kid on a walk, she just goes crazy. 
Uh, I think I have some records that might suit her. I suspect Lynn might be a Kiss fan. Let's find out which member is her favorite. But dreams are nothing more than wishes, and a wish is just a dream you wish to come true. Very, very smart. That's a good, uh, because Ace Fraley is obviously the best member of Kiss, so. So tell us about uh, fostering. What what's uh, what is the most rewarding aspect of fostering for you? I would say definitely getting to be involved in the process of finding the perfect home, getting to see exactly where they're going and who's going to love on them for the rest of their lives. That makes it a lot easier to help another one after you say goodbye to the one you're fostering. And that time in between where we are their foster parents is really special and kind of just uh, being able to give that dog a home to find their perfect forever home is really rewarding. Have you fostered before? Is this your first foster? This is my 56th foster. <laughs> Haven't foster failed yet. Still, we're, we're open to it one day, but so far it's just been so rewarding to get to help more dogs we haven't been able to keep one yet we still think you know one day maybe one will get along perfectly with our dog and we won't be able to say goodbye but for now we just are really enjoying the fostering process and it keeps our dog social um, even though he doesn't have another permanent dog friend at home he has somebody to hang out with somebody to go on walks with um, pack walks are great for keeping your dog social so that's been a really great benefit well, that, that's really inspiring to me, and I want to thank you for all the fostering you do. You save a lot of dog lives, which is uh, important to me, and I'm sure everybody involved here. So uh, take that as a hint to maybe think about fostering in the future.
Yeah, that was cool. I thought that was Optic Sync at DKDC. Why, that bar is just right around the corner from here. You can walk there easily. You could almost throw a stone and hit it, except you'd have to throw the stone over a big Chinese restaurant, which makes it harder to hit. So, <laughs> but that was some great footage, wasn't it? That was shot by Zach Mitchell, we think. Or Mitchell. I'm not sure which one. Mitchell. Jack Mi- Zach Mitchell. <laughs> Well, she put extra L's in there. I don't know why, but uh, I, I wouldn't pronounce that Mitchell for men. Mitchell. I think that's a good a good name for a fragrance. Zach Mitchell shot that footage over at DKDC. We'll thank him for that. And yeah, he's in Big Clown, and Big Clown's got they got new shows coming up. Anything you know about? You know, keep your eye open for Big Clown. They're always around. And. Uh, Hey, send your videos in, man. Shoot some videos around town and send them in. What else, what kind of thing we're looking for here? We'll take them and erase them. So, <laughs> before that, we had uh, <laughs> we love deleting emails from you. So, just send them on in. I'd love to do that. No, I, I seriously though, do send your videos in, and we'll erase them. So, uh, live rescue mission. <laughs> We won't. We'll watch them. Because I do. I would love to see your videos of some bands around town or just take some footage. You know, it'd be great to have a song or something. I think we need to broaden that out a little bit, get some more bands on here. Uh, before that, we had a little segment with the Live Rescue Mission, and you should check them out online. Um, Alive can use your help in all kinds of ways, not just committing to taking a strange dog into your house, but you can go over there and take a dog out for the afternoon. Or you can uh, foster, or if you're looking for a dog, it's a great place to pick up a dog. They spend time with them. They show the dog around, and, and you know they kind of help it out, and, and uh, you get to be friends with it. And uh, you can have it in your house later. I don't think I described the process quite as well. <clears throat> but we have an interview with the... Uh, the director after this segment of me talking, and she'll explain it a lot better than I did. And boy, we had Nick Allison in the Out of Doors over there at the River Series from November. It was cold back then. Yeah, I haven't seen you. Well, we haven't really done this since Christmas. We did the Christmas show January. We had uh, to skip, but uh, we'll be back here for the next few months. I think I'm in the back of the store, uh, you know, talking about stuff like uh, the new Ibex clone which is in the shop uh, available now. And, uh, you know, you can come by Goner. And if you weren't looking for that, maybe you were looking for this Tubes record that was behind it. Why not? The Tubes, hey, that's great. You know, I saw the Tubes play fairly, like, within the last 10 years. Yeah, I did, really did. And they were terrific. I mean, they were not at all uh, dull or anything. They were They were old and good still. Of course, that was 10 years ago. I don't know how long ago that was, but... It was probably more than 10 years ago. But, uh, yeah, I saw them in recent times is what I mean. And they really were good. They were they were good live. What other record? I'm just going to keep reaching back here. More tubes. More tubes, yeah. We got, we got lots of, I mean, you know, that's the mark of a record store is you're going to have lots of tubes records. Um, that tubes are t- our tubes are tied. But these really are very good records. And if you're on a budget, you know, $5 tubes record. I mean, they're good. I like the tubes. I have some of these albums on my own. Uh, on the other, I'm not as big a Marshall Tucker band fan, but this is the greatest hits. Th- this is a country band with a flute. <laughs> oh, that's weird. Yeah, no, it is. Uh, okay. Her, I know. My favorite member of Kiss is probably Ace Frehley. He get does not. He he gets a lot of credits. So I don't feel sorry for him, but he doesn't quite get the credit he deserves. I think because people think of Kiss as a jokish jokish band, but he he really can wail sometimes. And, you know, for that matter, Peter Chris, if you really pay attention to Peter Chris's drumming in Kiss, I know nobody, even even everybody in here is shaking their head. One day I'm going to be vindicated here. Peter Chris did have a feel at times because he could really charge. But do you, do you, were you saying, because I can prove this album has flute on it. No, I got confused with uh, Charlie Daniels. Charlie Daniels band. Oh, yeah, they were the, they were the violins, yeah. This is heard it in a love song. Can't be wrong. <laughs> that was flute. The well, that song was oddly. So, uh, my generation grew up listening to oldies and classic rock. That song was always on that channel, along with Taking Care of Business. Look at that. The best of BTO. 
another album we have down here at the store for not a lot of bread. You can get these albums fairly inexpensively. I don't know why, Marcio. I don't know. Yeah, these are all in the wrong place. What the hell? We don't spell very well here down here. I don't know what that is. It's a good time to stop because I don't know what that is, but it looks interesting. Barefootin' and the Tribesmen. Is that a band? Oh, it is. Barefootin' and the Tribesmen. Variety is the word here at Goner Records. So. I'm sorry. I don't know what I was doing there. I just lost my mind. From <laughs> I'm just throwing some stuff out there for you. It's kind of like shopping, except you're home watching me, and I'm not interested. So... <laughs> So, <laughs> well, this is just not what I would I would be necessarily in the, in the mood for. Out of all these? No, just get up and pick one. Oh. There is one, actually. This is a great pop psych album. This 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 uh, the eyes of Beacon Street Union. This has been this in the shop for a while. Yeah. It's the eyes of the Beacon Street Union. Yeah, it is. Okay. The eyes of the Beacon Street Union. Yeah. I thought that was the name of the record. Well, I don't know. Well, anyway. Was, that, that's a little more understandable than the Marshall Tucker man. <laughs> that wasn't anywhere close to where hell it needed to be. What was it? That was under flute or something, you know. Like, no, but this is a great pop psych album. It's been here. Oh, my. It's, this is approaching a year of service here in the store. People, you, know, you might want to come by. Check it out. We have a listening station. You come by, check out the Eyes of Beacon Street. It's a good. It really is. I'm not kidding. That's a good record. And it's been here a while. Good yeah. record by the Beacon Street Union. By the B, uh, the Eyes. Oh, whatever. Okay, so hey, when you come in, it'll be under B. Okay, just to make everybody happy here. Thank you. It'll be with Marshall Tucker. <laughs> yeah, under B. We'll for, for no for whatever reason. B a B T O the Beacon Street. And what was the other one? The band I didn't know? Barefootin'. All right. Well, we got some new, st- <laughs> new stuff coming up here. More of the same. Uh, we're going to start off with a few more from Nick Allison and the players. Did, did I get all the information in? Do we need to do anything? I'm, I'm going to talk again right after this, you know? Sure. Sounds good. Um, great. Well, let's kick it off, and, and you can see more of Nick Allison and the players being cold last year playing at the, it's the players lounge. It's the players lounge. Oh, I'm sorry. My fault. My fault. It's it it It's because it was one sentence. That's a long band name to my defense. Sorry about that. I really didn't mean to mess that up. Nick Allison and the Players Lounge played the River series. Uh and uh we got video of it right here on Goner Television. Check it out.
thank you, Zach, for having us out here. Thank you guys for braving the cold with us. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah. This last one's called Jump On In Because the Water Is Fine. And it goes like this. One, two, one, two, three, four. Jump on in. for records for our dog. All right, well, let's see what kind of record would be a good fit for Madison, is it? Madison, what do you say, Madison? <laughs> what kind of things does Madison like to do? Well, she likes playing with her other dog friends. She likes eating a lot. She's a big fan of food and treats. And uh, she likes she likes laying down in the sun in the grass. That's great. Does she uh, is she like children? She yeah. She's never had any problems with kids. Cats. I'm not sure that she's met many cats. Maybe never met a cat. That's okay. We can sure find out about that later, can't we? Madison, would you like to pick out a record? <laughs> I think that's a yes. Let's give it a try. Let's find out if Madison is a hound dog tailor, a swamp dog, or a moon dog. Go ahead. She enjoys a, a cross genre of tunes. Enjoyed by. Alright. Way to go. Hello. Hi. I'd like to get a record for my dog. 
Oh, I think we can accommodate that. What sort of things does your dog like to do? Well, this is item A. Um, she likes to sleep. Um, she likes to play in the backyard. Um, she likes to go for walks. Great. Does she uh, ever around children? Um, she's not been around children yet, but she's super sweet, so I can't imagine that she wouldn't be okay with them. What about other dogs and cats? Does she know other dogs and cats? She lives with three other Brendel dogs, as pretty as her, um, and she's never met a dog that she can't get along with. That's terrific. Well, she looks like a sweet dog. Ida, would you like to find a record in the store for us? Oh, okay. <laughs> well, we can work on that, too. Let's see what kind of record Ida's going to pick out today. I think we found some records of interest for Ida. We found some excellent activities. We found sleep, young golf, which I understand is one of her favorites, cars, and colored balls. That should be enough uh, dog activity for anyone to pick a couple of things out. Let's see what she likes to do. That's for you, buddy. Are you more into a book? Like, would you want to buy a zine or something? <laughs> like, oh my that, would, God. That, that would be my dog that would get a zine instead of a record. Yeah. yeah. You could make yeah, there we go. Me. That's super me. <laughs> would you tell us a little bit about the process of fostering it alive? Sure. Um, so when you foster for a live rescue, you would fill out an application. Um, then I would uh, process the application and we would call you and kind of pick out what the perfect kind of dog that you were looking for is. We're not the kind of rescue that just pulls a dog and puts it in a home. We specifically ask you like the questions of like what you're more comfortable with. So if you're looking for a Chihuahua, we're not gonna give you a Rottweiler. If you're looking for a Rottweiler, we're not gonna give you a Cocker Spaniel. Um, and then once you get approved to foster, we'd go to the shelter, look for a dog for you. Um, and then we supply everything, meaning dog beds, blankets, uh, kennels, food, all the vetting, of course. And then we also give emotional and um, training support. So if you're having issues with your dog and you call us, we would help you out and kind of walk you through that process. That's quite a lot of support. It must be very rewarding for you to see people uh, foster dogs and then hand them over to new homes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's not easy. And one of the things that people always say is like, I can't foster a dog because I would keep it. Um, I've had probably 40 to 50 dogs that I would have kept, but my house would be overrun with dogs and other dogs wouldn't be able to be saved. The dog that I brought here today, Ida Mae, is pretty amazing. And like, yes, I love her and I want to keep her, but there's not going to be somebody to be able to foster a dog like Ida Mae if I don't find a home for her and then continue doing what I'm doing. And in a city like Memphis, if you love dogs and you're not fostering, you're not really kind of helping the major problem that we have right now, which is a little bit overwhelming overcrowding kind of thing yeah i mean there's more dogs here than there are dog lovers unfortunately well that's a good thing to keep in mind if you think you could foster a dog um uh, what, what could people do to start go to your website go to our website our foster application and adoption application is exactly the same the reason for that is if you do fall in love with your dog who are we to tell you that you can't keep your dog so um if you're approved to foster you're approved to adopt um and then you would you foster fail which is not the worst thing in the world to do um and you'd be able to keep the dog that you fell in love with when you started fostering and what about i mean i, used, I know you said you match people with dogs but just as an example uh, do you do a lot of matching uh, older dogs maybe with people that don't have how big houses and things or things like that that sort of thing yeah. no i mean a lot of times an application will come in and it's kind of like uh you know, adopt a pet is like Tinder for dogs where you just see a photo of a dog and you're like, oh, that's my dream dog. But when I talk to a family and I kind of see like what they're looking for, I realize that's not the perfect dog, but it doesn't mean there's not another dog in our program that would be perfect. So a lot of people that are open to the process end up adopting a dog that may have not been the one that they picked at first, but ended up being perfect for their home. It matches the lifestyle and size of the home and things of that nature. Yeah, yeah. the dog's really what the dog would need to thrive in a certain environment. Um, tell, tell us what sort of, so you have events where people can come see and meet, meet dogs. You have one coming up? Yes, we're, um, we're all volunteer run, so all of our money comes from fundraising. Um, in 2020, right before COVID hit, we had a night at the Poscars, which was a crazy, huge, fun event. Drag queens, entertainment, dog fashion show. 
Um, it's basically our gala, essentially. Um, and then the last two years we've had to go, um, we had to walk away from doing in person and do it virtual, which was fun, but not the same. Um, so we're excited to have it coming back this year, March 3rd at the Cadre building um, from 7 p.m. to 11 p.m. It's gonna be a lot of fun. It's gonna be a way that we can raise money to save dogs like the seniors and the bully breeds and the dogs that we absolutely love to save. Excellent. And if you are interested and think that you're not the, the fostering type, there's also, you know, you also money and, and the donations can be made through the website, things of that nature. Sure. And then we're always looking for volunteers. I mean, there's volunteer opportunities that you can do from your couch. There's volunteer opportunities where you can pick a dog up, go on a field trip. It's not just fosters. Like a lot of our most solid volunteers don't foster. And we need that whole kind of mix of everybody to kind of keep the, the ship rolling. That's excellent to know, so you can try some things out if you don't know what kind of uh, dog person you are. Absolutely. Well, thank you for being with us and for letting us have the dogs in the store today. That was a lot of fun. Oh, thanks for having us. We're, we're always excited to work with Goner. And thank you, and uh, we'll, we'll uh, you know do our best to get the word out that some of these great dogs are, are ready to be adopted. Absolutely.
I'm Billups Allen. I'm a record store clerk, and I also host Goddard Television right here on the same internet you're watching me on now. I'm also a writer. I've recently written a book called 101 Films You Could See Before You Die, set to be released on Goddard Books on December 13th. Why a movie guide? I love reading about movies. I wanted to write something distinctively retro, something you might consider keeping next to your TV. Some films mentioned here are lost classics. Some are just movies with weird and poignant elements that have stuck with me over the years. This book is meant to be part academia, part humor, and part love letter to discovering movies. Maybe the air of the film guide is gone, but I sure enjoyed writing this book. And I hope you'll enjoy reading it, and maybe you'll discover a film or two. single and that video is made by noah miller and it's an interesting uh fact noah miller has as many l's in his name as zach mitchell or according to this piece of paper he does so um noah is a visual artist here in memphis you can check out this is noah have a website we can recommend people look at there's google um i see a lot of shrugging so okay and there's no audio we got audio now can you hear me? Well, I don't know. So I'll just keep talking. Uh, also, we had the second half of the live rescue uh, mission video of interviews with dogs. Uh, those dogs, those actual dogs are available for adoption right now. So if you're thinking about adopting, check in with Alive. They have those. Are we good? Should I start over or does any of that... Was that just We had me? to screw up some of it. Was that me just waving my arms? Alec, Alec would feel terrible if we didn't screw up some of it. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think it was. It was, it was all blacked out. But, okay, so well, um, let's just start we, over. We, we started with uh, thanking everybody for um, buying the book, reading the, the book. book yeah. The book, yeah. My book is Feeling bad because here. you haven't bought the book. Um, don't feel bad. It's, you're going to be fine if it's you It's a don't. feel-good book, so you'll feel better if you buy the book. Um, but I enjoyed uh, reading it. I've enjoyed some of the notes people have sent. Uh, it's a good book. It, so thank you. Even even if I haven't seen the movies, it makes it's it makes me want to watch the movies. The movies I have seen, I, you know, ponder your points and decide if you're you know on the ball or maybe I look at the movie a different way. It's a good book. Thank you. I I, I love watching movies. I like watching movies that I haven't seen before. Uh, I like good movie recommendations too. If you want to recommend something weird, we can watch online together or something. I don't know get weird with it it's the modern age you know uh before that and thank you again we had uh, ibex clone who were in mississippi tonight playing a show maybe they'll get some footage from that um but that was their new video by noah miller and noah miller is a memphis memphis visual artist here in memphis tennessee uh and uh, i don't know if we have any information we can share about noah does he have his art online or anything we'll just go by his house Look him up in the phone book. Stop by. Check out the Ibex video. clone video again. The, yeah, that video is good. Uh, <laughs> that's all you need to know. Uh, we had the second half of the Alive Rescue Memphis video with the dogs. And, you know, those dogs we had in the store that day are actually up, you know, available for adoption right now. So if you're thinking about adopting, 
check out Alive Memphis. Uh, you can check out those and other dogs. They've got an array, a rainbow of dogs with various needs. And uh, Alive works real hard to help you pick the dog that will fit your household best. Whether you're looking for a party wild dog or you're looking for a dog that's good with kids or you're looking for a dog that, uh, you know, uh, gets along with cats, they'll help you. And you can go over there and help them out if you can. And if, you know, you have donation money this year, you might think about donating to uh, Alive Rescue Mem- Memphis. Alive Rescue Memphis. We started to set out with Nick Allison, who has the same number of L's in his name as Noah Miller, and uh, the players. So Zach Mitchell, Nick Allison, and Noah Miller, Do all two read, L's uh, the in Lloyd names. Llewellyn uh, comic book? <laughs> I think so. What yeah, is that it? was the early Remind Dan Klaus, uh before Dan Klaus. Eight Ball. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was I Lloyd Llewellyn, and he was figuring. But that's probably the most L's. I just wanted to throw that in. They asked why I was having trouble with Zach Mitchell is because there's extra L's in the year, and I don't know if that's how you spell it. That's great. It just made me think for a second. <laughs> made me think for a second. Next show we are having no it. names with any L's in it. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> <laughs> Billups ah. Uh, yeah, I, my name has two L's. In it. My name has four L's in it. Wow. All the revelations here. Check that out. This is live television here, and I've just discovered my name has four L's in it. Alan. Alan. Well, if there was okay, if my name had an E at the end, would you think maybe it was wasn't Alan? I'd think you were French. Alan. 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 With an apostrophe at the end or something. Hey, we thought we'd take a minute and talk about what's going on with Gonerfest this year. It's it, it seriously. It's, Gonerfest it's, is on. It, it Gonerfest is off and running away from us and uh, everyone else, and we're down to less than a hundred tickets left. Uh, we are going to have night by night tickets at some point closer to the festival, but golden passes are going to be gone within a matter of days, uh, which is incredible. Uh, we have a, a lineup almost filled up we're just waiting on some confirmations and bands uh i you're breaking my heart trying to trying to get on the festival at this point uh amazing bands that are asking to get on and we seriously do not have room so um it's going to be incredible uh get your tickets if you haven't gotten tickets it's at rail garden again uh lots of space to spread out or pack the stage or you know see from all kinds of angles and um the last two years have have worked really well over there and this this year looks to be the biggest and best yet um september 28th through october 1st with after parties and other stuff still to be announced now yeah the mummies are coming back this year the mummies are coming back uh the last time the mummies were here they showed a trailer for their movie and now it seems like there was there was a black there was silence b- between this go- that goner fest and the movie getting done. Now it seems like there's talk of the movie getting done again. Have you heard any? I they, I uh, will they be showing any more clips from their movie? I contacted fest? Jim Granado, who is shooting the the Mummies movie, and they're still working on it. I was hoping that we could show it at uh, mm. the drive-in during Goner Fest Ooh, or something great, exciting like that. Um, but it doesn't look like it's going to be done. Um, we'll keep you posted. That would be really fun. Who else are you excited about this year? Oh man, Civic. Uh, Civic just had a new album come new out. Album. New album. Uh, the Gories, of course. The OCs are uh, on tour, but not through here. So they're flying in for the show special which is uh, a big effort on their part and we really appreciate we had them at goner fest five and goner fest six um and since then they've just exploded obviously they're huge now so that's super exciting the um coffin playing uh 1-800 mikey tv repair man um, that's a great that's a great new album too yeah on total punk records uh-huh yeah that's a, i love that new album. Like all, that album all this stuff there's so many uh we, we've got bill orcutt and chris corsano coming to for a little mayhem in the middle um turned which features uh ross johnson on drums and a bunch of other memphis 
uh, folks are going to be playing on the Sunday, which uh, is not to be missed. It's just, I mean, band by band, it's it's mind blowing. Um, we're really looking forward to it. So yeah, like I said, I hope you can make it to Memphis um, at uh, Goner Fest twenty. Goner Fest twenty. That's that's quite a number. The it double, is yeah, double. Yeah, so I guess it was always double digits for a while. But yeah, if we get to a hundred. Uh, <laughs> We'll do one a week. Yeah, one a week yeah. until then. Now, now you say the OCs are flying in. You mean on an airplane, right? They're not. There's no weird. Dwyer, can Dwyer they, might be able. Can to they do. fly themselves in? Somehow, Their private jet. No, some way I haven't thought about. They're flying commercial. Yeah, first class though. First class all the way. Are we? Are we really? Is that? Is that? Is, that's the inside scoop. Are they flying first class? We well, don't know. Okay. I'm not going to say they're not. Well, terrific. I'm glad we well, glad we talked about that. Uh, oh, so uh, I yeah, actually, actually do have a serious question. Well, you say the Golden Passes are selling, but people will still have access to tickets after that, right, or no? I mean... Is it once that... I, I, I kind of forget how that works. You can remind everybody. So the Golden Pass gets you access to everything, every official Goner thing that we uh, do. If, right. Um, but, yeah, the Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday afternoon thing. We will sell tickets, a limited amount of tickets. We are pushing capacity uh, at the venue with all these people, all these bands, and um, all that. So uh, we're not pushing capacity, but we're getting to where we're comfortable with uh, the amount of people that are going to be in there to the max. But I'm saying, um, how is that done? Is that about, you have to go up there the night of, or the, will they we, be selling? We will probably have some tickets each night, uh-huh. but we are going to have advanced you know, if I really want to see the OCs and um, Peggy stepped on my foot one time and I don't want to see the Gories, um, <laughs> you can buy just Thursday. Or if, you know, John Dwyer stepped on your foot and you want to see the Gories, you can buy Friday. Or um, if you want to see the Mummies only, you can buy Saturday. But they're going to be hard to get. There's not going to be many of those. It's much easier to get a Golden Pass and see it all and hang out. And I mean, all the people are... You know, the bands, the music, and, and the people and Memphis, I think, are what sells Goner Fest, and it's going to be in full effect. And those tickets concerned. will be available online. Yes. Right. So don't call me on a Saturday afternoon and ask me about that. Cause call him. I he'll be here. He'll, I can't do anything about it. I don't have tickets to sell you. Yeah. They're online tickets. That's yeah. just the thing. That it's the way it is. I don't mind you calling. It's just uh, <laughs> it happens. <laughs> Sometimes, and you know, I'm, I'm glad to know now myself. I know what I can tell you to do. Right. Um, make plans. Make plans to come to in September. It's going to be a big festival, Goner Fest. If you live in Memphis, you must have heard of it. Yeah. If you're watching from somewhere other than Memphis, I think it's harder to hear about to, it now. I think it's harder to get people from. We I have checked, and there's a lot of people from Memphis bought tickets, but it is hard to get your head around buying tickets for something in town six months ahead of time you think there's always going to be a chance to buy tickets if you're planning and coming from you know italy you're like i got a plan six months ahead of time a guy from germany bought tickets the other day i noticed they're coming they're coming i mean popped up guys from germany he's flying in yeah so i don't know what the first class or not but i'll I'll try to find out yeah first class (laughs) first class all the way (laughs) we'll we'll, we'll, we'll interview him about it ask how he flew in (laughs) See what he did. Oh, that's about it, I think. Yeah, I guess that was a fun show. I'm yeah. Uh, thanks for tuning in to Goner TV. Uh, uh, next time, we're going to have more music videos and more information about things going on here at the store and at Goner Fest. That's right. We're going to, you know, watch, watch out for uh, new new formats, new ideas as uh, Goner TV moves into the 20th century. And I often say this, but we do have a lot of good records coming. We've been pricing like mad lately, so... Come down and see what we got if you got a chance. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, even I'm finding stuff out there in the bins. I'm like, where the hell did this come from? So uh, we're, we're, we're doing well with records right now. Come by. Come say hello. We'll yeah. Be, we'll be here selling records. Yep. Uh, yep. Even Dane. <laughs> Dude. So that's it. Thank you uh, from Goner TV okay. to your home. Bye. <laughs> Good night. Go away, Foka. Play. Goodbye. Yeah, Just keep uh, showing play, it. Play the Goner TV uh, credits. Don't we have that? 
play the play the Goner TV. Should make you read them just for the just for that. You're reading them. I'll read them. Thanks to Zach Michelle yeah. for coming on. It's, I think it's in Thanks for Noah Miller. Clips or something. Thanks to uh, Nick Allison and the Players Lounge. Thanks to everybody's name we mispronounced and misspelled tonight. <laughs> Thanks to Ibex Clone. I still don't know what that means. Uh, Finish broadcast. Finish broadcast. Yeah.